We're back. We're live. This is Think Tech Tech Talks, and we're talking about why all the fuss about chat GBT. How will it affect the world? And after this moment, we're going to meet Attila Sares, who will tell us everything. Okay, Attila Sares, thank you for joining us today, SIPAC. And uh, you are familiar with chat GBT. This is very important. It's been in all the news. Everybody is racing, you know, to find out what it is and to use it. And it's usable. It's out there. My God. And you know, and you can tell us. So this is really a worthy discussion. Welcome to the show, Attila. Oh, thanks for having me, Jay. So what is ChatGBT? Where did it come from? And um, uh, what, you know, in general now, we can drill down. Uh, what can it do for us? Well, for years now, people have been getting more and more comfortable talking to a box, screaming requests and demands and having it delivered to their door in the form of Alexa or OK Google or whatever you want to call it. There's always something new around the corner. But really, these kind of toys have been designed to sell goods uh, or maybe tell you about the weather or help you figure out what your schedule is like. It's not really there to do anything more than give you information or to sell you something. Uh, with generative AI, that all changes. And it kind of flips the industry on its head, which is why it's so so revolutionary. Yeah, so, indeed. Uh, think, think of it this way. You know, in the past, maybe you'd ask, like, what is the weather? Uh, well, then, you know, Alexa would tell you what the weather is, or your phone would tell you what the weather is. But what about advice? What kind of shoes should I wear today? And AI now puts those two and two together. It'll say, okay, well, based on where you are, this is the weather, and you should wear some closed-toed shoes because maybe your feet might get wet, right? <laughs> so that's the difference between AI and simple information. And the reason that Google has called Code Red on ChatGPT is because it flips their entire business model upside down. Google doesn't have a technology problem. They got all the money, they got all the brains, they have all the data. But what they can't do is pivot their entire business model based on this. So. Uh, folks have been using ChatGPT as one of many generative AI engines out there. ChatGPT is the most popular to do things and find out information that otherwise wouldn't be uh, easily found on Google. I'll give you an example on how I used ChatGPT the other day. Uh, I, I came home. It was the end of a long day. I said, wow, I really want to make some soup. And, uh, you know, so I turned on my phone and I go to some soup recipes. And before I know it, I'm being like sold Campbell's stuff and, you know, there's pop-ups and there's some idiot dancing in the corner of my phone screen. It's driving me crazy. So instead, I just looked at my fridge. I said, what do I have here? I got celery, I have potatoes. Uh, I have uh, had a couple other ingredients. I said, hey, ChatGPT, make me a soup with the ingredients I have in my fridge. Came up with a recipe. Soup was great. So that's a perfect example of using information and giving me real advice that I can use. And it goes on and on from there. Yeah, we're going to go on as, as far as we can. So um, let's see uh, the uh, website that uh, shows the offerings here, uh, the chat GBT website. And then we'll go from there and we'll see how it works, at least in, uh, in, 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 small, in small ways. Okay, there's a uh, called Playground. And if you go on uh, the website, which is uh, openai.com, It'll write an essay for you immediately. Uh, and then furthermore, um, we've recorded uh, something uh, that uh, Attila uh, asked it to do. That is write a little poem about me. So let's look at that one and see how that works. And Attila, you can read the poem. Oh, yes. So I asked ChatGPT to write me a love poem to my good friend Jay, who loves to talk on the radio and surf Waikiki. Jay with a voice like honey. On the airwaves, you're a star. With tales of waves and sunny skies, you take us all so far. Your love for the ocean is plain for all to see. Riding the waves at Waikiki is where you're meant to be. But what I love most about you is your heart that's pure and true. A friend like you is hard to find. I'm so lucky to know you. So here's a love poem from me to you. From me to you. Jay, my dear friend, I'll always think of you. <clears throat> I'm now sure. tell me, isn't I'm that sure. better than something you're going to get in a in a in a card from a Hallmark? You know, it's out of Shakespeare. 
I mean, you know, what's interesting is there's so much literature where the fellow wants to write a, a sweet poem to somebody, and he, he turns to his friend, and he says, would you write that poem for me? And the friend writes the poem, and then, you know, the, the, the fellow sends the other fellow's poem to the girl. And, and you don't need that anymore. You can go on a chat to a GBT, and you can, you can have it write any poem you want to anybody. And then it goes much further than poetry, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, so a lot of kids have been using this. That's how they've been getting in trouble. In fact, uh, a student recently was busted for uh, using ChatGPT to write a senior thesis. Uh, and uh, it's even gone as far as to publish a children's book that's available on Amazon. Uh, so um, recently, also, it just passed a, uh, a business school uh, master class. So it was able to create content that was that would pass as a as a as a as a business student. And, um, you know, it, it, it keeps on going from there. Uh, my son came to me uh, last week. He says, you know, I'm trying to, I, I'm writing a, uh, a short, short film. He did a little Lego animated film for his school on uh, the French impressionist movement. And I would like to know who were the art critics of the time during the time of the fresh French impressionists. So I put it in. And sure enough, it spat out the, a perfect essay. He could have turned it. Um, all the information, all the research, everything was was done in ChatGPT. And that's that's one application, but it goes so much further. We use this a lot to debug code, to debug scripting. Uh, it has all the major languages in there. Uh, so it can not just convert computer languages and fix uh, computer type challenges, but it can also uh, help you with uh, you know international things. So if you want to ask things about uh, different languages, it can do that as well. It can debug code. It can go through code and find code that's faulty and tell you where and how to fix it. And all. Wow. Now, there are some caveats to this, and this is pretty important. So uh, let's pretend you run a customer service department, and maybe your people are not so eloquent uh, with writing to a customer that they you know, need to perform steps one, two, and three in order to repair this problem. Um, you can put that into ChatGPT, and ChatGPT will write you a nice thing. Uh, in fact, you can uh, one of the uh, keywords you can put in ChatGPT is write it as if I were a five-year-old. So if you're having a complex problem and explain it to me as if I were five, it'll put that nicely together for you. Flip side of that is, of course, um, ChatGPT now owns that content. So you want to be careful not to put anything too identifiable in there, such as a customer's name. Owns? Or... Did you say owns? I thought I yeah. heard you say owns. Yes. So is, it... is they claiming copyright in, in the text? They now ho own your, your J with voice like honey love poem that I just read to you. They, they own that now that it has been generated by them. I wonder what about their competitors, you know? That GBT uh, may claim to own it, but somebody else can do uh, the same kind of, uh, you know, AI on the same request, the request that you made for a poem, and maybe not claim it. So there's there's all kinds of commercial possibilities here. Well, you do know that on Monday, Microsoft announced, or should I say they confirmed, their intention to put $10 billion into this open AI uh, company, the one that wrote ChatGPT. That's how popular it is. You know, um, go ahead. It's, it's hit mass media, too. I mean, it was featured on Saturday Night Live last Saturday. They did a segment on ChatGPT. I mean, it, it's hit that threshold. It's been around about a year now. But in the past month, it's completely blown up. We used to use it, you know, months ago and never had any problems with bandwidth or, hey, our servers are busy right now. In the past couple of weeks, not the case. It's completely overtaken, overrun by everyone it using. It blows your mind. You know, we, we have a, a voice engine software where you put the text in and then it reads the text and gives you a voice, any number of voices, you know, really hundreds of voices. And you can have somebody speak your text. But then if you take chat GBT, you don't even need that. You can have it write and speak or speak. And so you can create a person five-year-old or 50-year-old uh, who can, right, who can, who can speak whatever you ask that person to speak. Well, there are some terrifying 
new technologies out there. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, this this new one, it's called, um, let's see, uh, it's another generative AI platform where they created a interview between Joe Rogan and Steve Jobs, which of course never happened, right? Because mm -hmm. two didn't exist at the same time. And this is all done by podcastnotes.org. Uh, there's a link to it on our website and they use generative AI to do this. Uh, Canva also uses generative AI to make uh, custom artwork for you. So it's not limited to this. And uh, as you know, Jay, I sent you the information last week on what's going on in the legal profession. Uh, I, I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know the impact or ramifications of this. But uh, AI has been successfully beating speeding tickets. Uh, or or parking tickets, either speeding or parking tickets, to the tune of like 450 of them over the past year. And now it can act as your counsel when you're in court. Well, you know, I mean, what's interesting is you say when you're in court, but there are so many opportunities to submit written work uh, without going to court. I mean, let, let's talk about politics for one minute, then we can get back to law. So uh, Vladimir Putin has perfected the Internet Research Agency. And uh, th there's a whole building of people um, in Moscow who write out the text they use um, to upload to social media in order to try to change public opinion in a given place, um, especially the U.S., uh, and change votes. Um, in fact, there have been a number of articles about this recently, how the Internet Research Agency was uh, instrumental in electing Donald Trump in 2016. I got one today, and I was very impressed. But I knew already that they were doing this. They had this building full of people writing English, appropriate to you know young people, I suppose, to go on social media and to be retweeted and republished all over. And it had a significant effect uh, in the election of 2016. So. <clears throat> I don't need that building anymore. I don't need those people anymore. I can have the little machine write this, this text out and deliver it by social media, and people at the receiving end will, you know, will be affected. Their opinions will be, their sensibilities will be affected. And if you, you can say, write it in a bubble. You know, tell me that the Constitution is wrong. Let's let's have another insurrection, whatever it may be. Um, and and this could write whatever message you're asking, and it could write it in such a way so that the audience that you're addressing it to, I suppose it could also decide the audience um, that you're addressing it to uh, would be listening. So, wow, you, you know, he doesn't need the Internet Research Agency if he uses this. That's very scary. And now to go back to the law, okay? A lot of cases are decided on paper. You submit your pleading, okay, by email or upload. You don't have to go to court. A lot of appellate decisions are being decided that way. Um, so yeah, I suppose you could have a, an appearance in court, but likely it's not these days. You don't. And so, if you had the machines writing against each other, you know, one uses the AI to write the opening brief, another one uses the AI to write the uh, reply brief, and then the rebuttal, rebuttal briefs, um, you could have the whole case uh, framed up with AI. Well, you know, you're, you're hit on a few good, really important topics. So one of them is social media. Uh, on, on our blog, I put together a lot of resources on how to get started with ChatGPT. It's on our deep watch uh, on our on sidepack.com. Uh, but specifically there, uh, what you want to look at is how you can use current trending events on social media to then leapfrog like what you're talking about, your agenda. Uh, or uh, if you have something of value and you want to tie it into something that's uh, you know relevant, uh, then you know AI is the way to do it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll take it one step further, though, is that there is another piece of generative AI that Microsoft has been working on. 
And that uh, generative AI takes a three second clip. And based on that three second clip, it can create an entire, um, an entire conversation uh, based on just that. Uh, so it's called Vol E, so V A L L, kind of like Wally, and with three seconds only. And it's there's a link to it also on the blog there. It can reproduce your voice and this entire conversation. So Jay, you and I, uh, we could all just be AI engines, and we wouldn't we we could have an entire conversation without anyone knowing the difference. Would it be as interesting? Possible. Uh, it, it might be, you know, I got to say, I listened to that uh, Steve Jobs and Joe Rogan interview, and there were some pretty good takeaways there. Like, uh, it was it was believable. I, I, I recommend you go to that. It's there on the blog also. Just listen to that uh, to that interview. You might be surprised. But, you know, we're just at the beginning here. This is kind of like, you know, Gutenberg press type innovation. So, you know... It, it's kind of like Gutenberg press times a thousand, really. Mm -hmm. So we're at the beginning. You know, I think we're just still starting to learn what these tools are. Um, but instead of being afraid by them, I think we should learn to adopt them and use them so that we're not sidelined by them, right? So this is not a threat. This is an opportunity for us to become better at content creation, at curating content. It's an assistive tool. It's kind of like... Uh, you know, a uh, lane assist or uh, or cruise control for your car. It, does, it doesn't take away your ability to think and drive. It just helps you become a better driver on long stretches of road. Well, I think it's important to have um, countermeasures, if you will. For example, I'm I'm the professor that gets this uh, paper, and um, there's something about the paper that makes me quizzical over it. So I run it through an AI discovery machine. And in fact, there was a, an article about exactly this kind of software. Young fellow um, made an AI discovery machine. So if you have a, a problem or a, a concern about the written material you, you got, you can run it through this machine, this software, and it will tell you if it's, you know, the probabilities that it's been written by another machine. So here's one machine being judged by another machine. Oh, wow. Okay, then if you go back into court with me and you have all these briefs being submitted by AI, um, you could have a machine that decides whether a given brief is the real deal or whether it's uh, written by AI. And then here's the best part. You could have a machine that makes a decision about which side should prevail in this case. And I've been waiting for that for years. Who needs judges? Uh, you, you have the machine judge. And, and query, you know, is the machine. You know, the problem is if I tell the AI to lie, and I have to be skilled, I think, to do this, if I tell the AI to lie and make a completely outrageous argument, will it do that? And will it be identifiable as an outrageous argument? And what do I need to do? to identify outrageous arguments. That same thought process is probably what it's programmed to do. Is it exactly think about like, where are the boundaries of what is outrageous and what is reasonable? Uh, and it, it can think faster than we can. So yes, the, uh, you know, we're, we're on the verge of having a, a robot come back from the future and uh, try to stop things from happening, <laughs> like the Terminator. <clears throat> but it is true. Like, how do you, you know, where do you draw the line between uh, what is, uh, you know, what is safe and what is right? You know, th this is uh, this is going to become. We're going to have some big decisions coming up. You know, Elon Musk has been talking. I, I know everyone hates Elon Musk right now, but him and as well as many others have been talking about AI as being one of the largest threats to humanity. But it was kind of something in the shadows, like you knew. Well, maybe it's just tracking my shopping patterns, like. So what? But now when kids are able to use AI to write their school reports or engineers are able to use AI to help better understand how to build structures and buildings and, and software developers are using it to create code, uh, it becomes an assistive tool that leapfrogs us into the next generation. And if you're not using it, Jay, if you're not using it, you're being left behind. Yeah, you're leaving something on the table for sure. 
Well, but let me ask you, before we go further on, on you know, the effect of this, it seems to me that you, you have to program it. You have to give it values, not only information, you have to give it analytical values. You have to tell it to come out on this side or that side or press this point or, you know, diminish that point. Um, so it's, it, it's not just a complete person. It's a person you program. And it would be different from one version of, uh, you know, uh, uh, AI to another version. If I if I go and look at um, uh, what is it, Chat uh, Chat GBT, it it's been programmed by this group. If I go look at the Microsoft one, it's been programmed by that group. It's not going to be the same. The result will be completely different. And so we have to look at what's going in because what's going in is what's coming out. Well, let, let me terrify you for a moment. So Chat GBT took static values. So it, it took data from 2021. It's not connected to the internet. So it can't tell you what happened on the news yesterday. It's not there yet. Microsoft putting their $10 billion investment, they're going to tie it to Bing. They want to overtake Google and they might be able to because they have, they see where this is going. They can integrate this with Microsoft Word, right? So instead of having, uh, you know, remember Clippy? I'm hoping they bring Clippy back and make him an AI. I think that'd be really fun. But uh, yeah, having an AI engine assist in creating documents in Word and Excel and helping you do calculations and everything else, game changer. And once they tie Jet, chat GPT to the live internet, that's essentially putting Skynet online right there. It's going to have every piece of information out there rather than just, you know, generative. So here's, here's the thing, though. Um, this has huge commercial possibilities. I mean, aside from writing papers uh, for your teacher or writing briefs for court or writing promotionals to promote your business, all very nice. But there are some very sophisticated problems in our world that need to be resolved. Uh, I mean, and you'd make money if you could resolve them. You could solve problems you were simply unable to do. You and your 10,000 employees were unable to do. So you lay it into, you know, uh, uh, open, open AI. So my question to you is this. Not everybody is going to be able to figure out how to address um, the, the, the chat GBT and get the answers they need to get. It's going to take a little skill. Uh, of course, uh, different uh, open, uh, open AI programs will be smarter or maybe not as smart. But in the end, Attila, somebody could help me. Uh, I have a problem. Uh, it's, it's about business development. It's about science, technology, something very complicated. I have no clue on how to use it. Uh, I could ask, uh, you know, the AI to, to, to tell me how to use it. But I could also ask you, Attila, I could come to you and say, you, would you be my, um, you know, my, my open chat AI, uh, you know, guru and help me phrase the, the request. Help me use the AI. Help me compare the products, the AI products. Uh, one against the other. Some might be better in engineering. Some might be better in writing poetry. Um, I have to make a choice there. And so I, I need an expert. And this is worth an enormous amount to me because of the value of the product. So I suggest to you, there's going to be people, maybe including you, Attila, who I would come to, who would be a, a guru for me and who would help me take my request and get a really good answer for it and change my company. Well, you're right. And, you know, I think you hit on an important topic, Jay. There are going to be those who have and those who have not. You remember in the early days of the Internet, there were those that had dial-up, those that had high-speed Internet. <clears throat> How much of an advantage did we have as a country by being online before third world countries? And so the push over the past few decades has been to get internet access to everyone on the planet. And it's worked. It's brought up the quality of life in the, in, in the world. 
Uh, there's access to and just, we we have all the information now. Everyone has access to it in their pocket. And <clears throat> this is going to become commercialized. Just this week, um, OpenAI changed from being 100% free to $41 a month. Whoa. Uh, they have uh they have a paid tier. So now they throttle down so you can only uh you know have a certain number of requests per hour. I think it's like 20 per hour. And it's going to continue to change from there. And uh, those that know how to use this technology and have access to it and who are willing to pay for it will get ahead. It's that simple. Oh, that is chilling. Because what it means is that the, the better AI programs are going to be worth more than $41 a month. You could have a whole corporation in one person with one terminal, one you know computer asking these very difficult questions. Um, you could, the, the, the way we earn our living, the way we do our collaborative business development is going, may I say this, is going to change. Yeah, we are knowledge workers, Jay, you and I, we, we're, not, we're, not, we're not building something that's tangible. So as knowledge workers, every tool that gives us a better advantage to, to, to do our craft even better uh, is is very valuable, and that's why I say to everyone who's in knowledge work, whether that's accounting or creative work, uh, using generative AI, not necessarily ChatGPT, but generative AI to create art, to create video, to create content, create social media, marketing, uh, any sort of you know language based stuff, any sort of calculations, engineering, at using a generative AI platform is going to be required. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to be competitive without it. So I could say to my um, chat GBT, why don't you create a conversation between me and Attila Ceres, uh, and we'll play it at, you know, at a, a given time, and it, it'll, it'll concern, uh, you know, chat GBT and all these things. And you can make it up. You can have two voices. And you can make us, you can make photographs of us, videos of us having this conversation. And then I can go through my whole day here on ThinkTech and I can have various conversations based on, you know, the Microsoft Bing approach of wrapping in all the news. I could, I could have the news coming and I could have features coming and I could teach people stuff uh, only by asking a question. Have Attila and me or somebody else uh, have a conversation, make it last so long, uh, give me video and sound, and replace the whole operation with a, with a few instructions to the chat GBT. Am I right? Is this what, what, you know, like, we have to hurry now. In fact, you know, I didn't want to say this before, Attila, but and I didn't want to tell anybody, but this whole show was developed with chat GBT, the whole thing. You know, people would believe you. People would believe you, Jay. I mean, so how do we, you said, we, you know, got to get into it or let me left behind. How do we get into it? What do we do now? I mean, this is not easy. It's a, it's, it's a brand new uh, a jump into cold water. Uh, how do we get into it? <clears throat> well, you got to start using it. So sign up uh, on the open, openai.com or just Google ChatGPT. Once you're in, that's great. It gives you a pretty basic display. In fact, I was showing it to you earlier, Jay, and you were not impressed, I know. But uh, the links that I have on our blog, so if you go to SciPack.com, go to the DeepWatch blog, you'll see a ChatGPT quick start guide. I have 100 things you need to, 10 ways to maximize your productivity today. I got 100 things you should do with ChatGPT before you get fired. <laughs> I got a, a complete listing to the open source archive of ChatGPT phrases and tips and tricks on how you can start using it more effectively. Uh, and guess what? You have this other thing called Google, which also has lots of information about ChatGPT because it's been on fire the past month. Everywhere from you know Forbes to the Times, they're all writing about ChatGPT, how it's used. And uh, we're, since we're just at the beginning, there's only a handful of stories. I mean, I just shared a couple of stories about how I made a soup you know, with ingredients in my fridge and uh, how I was able to do some code debugging, uh, how I was able to uh, you know, help my son with his homework. 
there's thousands of people using it in every day, every which way. And some people, some ways are upsetting, right? Some people are really upset that ChatGPT wrote a children's book and then put it for sale up on Amazon. But it happened November of last year, yeah. Well, if uh, if it was ChatGPT, somebody else owned, owned the words, so that would have been a real problem if Amazon found out about it or anybody found out about it. So, okay, last question, Attila, what's the dark side? You know, whenever you have disruptive technology like this, that, that clearly is going to change the world. It could help, but it could also change the world in bad ways. Um, do you see a dark side? Um, can you warn us about that? You know, a hammer can be used to, well, to quote Thor, to use to create, or it could be used to destroy. So, uh, like with every new technology, yes, there there are some downsides, and I'm sure that people become more skeptical about the things that they see and read and hear, which I believe we should be anyway, right? You know, how do we know Jay's a real person? I don't know, Jay, Jay, Jay may not be a real person. He could be a robot for all we know, you know, and, and AI will probably get that kind of healthy skepticism. But in the same way, I mean, think about how much faster we can go how much better we can do. I mean, we are all, once again, we're in the knowledge work industry. We we are in professional services. And any tool that can help us go better, faster, stronger, easier, is going to be hugely uh, impressive and attractive to anyone who's in this field. What so, about uh, cyber attacks? Can AI do cyber attacks faster, better? It, they already do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fortunately, they already do. So uh, th this has been used for a long time for cyber attacks because it's a lot simpler, right? You know, cyber attack is a simpler thing to do than to try to write an essay, right? That's that's more difficult. Or should I say a convincing essay? So um, from that perspective, yes, where the AI has been long used for cyber attacks and and to uh, to inflict harm on people and to find vulnerabilities and exploits and that kind of thing, but um, from a from a professional point of view. I think that our ability to communicate these kind of things better is going to improve with AI. So we can we can take a complex idea, such as a cyber attack, and put it into ChatGPT and say, explain this problem and this solution as if I were a five-year-old. And it'll give you a nice, simple, and easy-to-use understanding uh, of, of a complex idea. And so from that perspective, it's a great learning tool. And it's a great way to convey information. I'm I'm so glad you've studied it. I'm so glad you have these uh, really great resources on your website, and and I, I'm so glad that you see into the future. I'm not sure everybody does, um, but I do I do feel that there will be those among us, including you, Attila, that will help us in using it in in uh, in having the benefit of it in so many ways. This is the beginning of a long conversation with a real human. <laughs> Tell us the rest, uh, SIPAC, helping us understand things we would not other under otherwise understand. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jack. Stay Aloha. safe out there. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.